Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to present the very first webinar organized by the Department of Sound, Arts and Design at the University of Arukal. Uh, today, we have a special guest from Turkey, uh, Sina Hakman, uh, who will be giving us a talk about the theory and physics of sound, uh, which is directed towards well, uh, students in the field of sound design, music production, uh, and not only for musicians, but also for audio fields or, and people interested in acoustics and the nature of sound and how our hearing works and our perception of sound. Um, just want to give you a little bit about uh, information about uh, Sina Hackman. Uh, he is um, he graduated from the Middle East Technical University uh, Electrical and Electronic Engineering Department in the year of uh, 1987. Um, he worked throughout the years as a software engineer, uh, project manager, team leader, technology entrepreneur, and manager. Uh, he's also an amateur musician and a DJ um who is uh, presenting the radio show called social music on a independent radio station called uh, Achik radio his interest in electronics software and music have collectively brought him to the world of digital audio and most recently during the pandemic he embarked on a detailed study and a training campaign uh, to understand the effects of electronics, acoustics, and software on the sound quality of a recording. And as a result, he prepared it and actually delivered a training series uh, directed towards audiophile communities. Uh, today, we will have the opportunity to gain insights into his knowledge and in this field. Um, and so without further ado, I will leave the stage to uh, Sina Hackman. Thanks so much, Inal. Thanks. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Handan and, and Inal for inviting me to do this webinar in Arukat. Um, actually, we've been exchanging ideas with Handan a few years ago, before even the before inception of of the sound, uh, the Department of Sound and uh, Art and Design. Um, so it's very nice uh, to see it materialized, and so that I, I can actually talk to the students there. So. Is, um, which I feel really privileged. Um, so, um, so thanks, thanks for uh, introducing me. I, I wouldn't do it better actually. So thanks so much. You know. Um, so first of all, uh, let me just quickly talk about why I did this um, or why I'm I'm focusing on this topic. Um, so this actually this pre the whole presentation prepared after a very simple question an audiophile friend uh, of mine asked me. So he said, "How come a single cable can pass all the complex sound and music that we hear?" It's it's a very simple and, and nice question, um, but it's very hard to explain it. So um, so I try to ex I, I kind of know it, but you know I I try to explain it uh, on the spot. Or I failed miserably. So he didn't understand anything. He, he was more confused and, and so on. So then I said, okay, I'll, I'll try to do better. Um, so I started trying to make it really, really simple as possible, obviously. But, um, but inevitably, I had to cover a lot of topics. So anyway, um, so what you will see now is, is my attempt to make things as simple as possible for for anyone that is interested in sound music music production and so on this was mainly a, you know the target audience was that audiophile community which is kind of a hobby that they're, they're trying to listen to music the way the producer is intended uh, to to present it to us um which is one part of the whole equation obviously and 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 there's obviously the the, the production of it but i think Looking at from various different angles will, will help everyone uh, on this. So uh, what I did is I tried to change it so that it it sounds um, and feels 
um, that that I've I've did it for the sound designers. So <laughs> so I'm cheating basically. Uh, this was a audiophile normally an audiophile um, presentation, but I I think I I managed to to keep it um, uh, as simple as possible, but covering the sub topics for for sound designers as well. So I hope you won't be um, uh, you, you won't be bored with with all this. Um, thinking that it's kind of the middle of the day, uh, lunch hour and so on. So thanks for coming, definitely. <laughs> I appreciate that. Anyway, um, so let's very quickly start this. Um, so first of all, why why are you listening to this? Why you have why I think you should learn sound theory? Um, it's it, it's so easy to uh, to ignore this, to be honest, um, and and. As I said, my friend could, listens to music. My audiophile listens to music. He has equipment, l loves to set them up and everything. And yet, uh, the, the the same question, which is like, you know, how could a, a pair of wires can pass that complex information is not clear to him. So to uh, I, I think that it's important for, for anyone, especially for a sound designer, to understand the nature of the sound that that you're creating and and conveying intentions um so i think the the key thing is is to to pass on the uh, the emotions and and whatever you want to in, intending to to pass on and that needs um that needs a, a a special care on on the nature of the sound obviously you go into like you know how to record mix master and and so on and and there's all sorts of terms that that you need to use um or or, or understand um different um uh, effects and and uh plugins and and so on and and you, i i've generally seen people using it uh, like as as somebody ex somebody shows them or, or or tries different things which is okay but it it's always it always helps to understand the um, uh, the the, th the theory behind it. So uh, understand understanding the concepts of analog and digital audio is is quite important. Generally speaking, people miss that, and then they go into direct results of it. So my thinking is um, is that if you want to understand um, the effects of of analog and digital audio, the plugins, the signal processes, and all that. And finally, the acoustics. You need to understand understand that. Um, and and finally, I think it's important that you train yourself and and attain critical listening skills. Um, otherwise, you know, you won't be able to produce uh, good results. And it and it's important, as you've probably seen from different recordings or or, or trials that you made. So anyway, um, I, I don't want to go into into why you should do this. So let's let's go directly to the subject. Um, so what is sound? Um, so it's actually energy, and and it, it it's a vibration, vibrational energy that is transferred using a medium. So you won't have a, a sound in vacuum because there's no there's no material there. So it needs some material, and that material um, by using pressure waves uh, go transmits that energy from one point to the other. Um, and the way that it does is, if you look at the the, the, uh, the pictures over there, it, it just take a drum, say, right? You you hit the drum, and the skin of the drum goes down because you hit them, and and that causes a a lower pressure area because the air needs to be filling that in, and when it fills it in, it doesn't immediately fill it in, but it it creates some low pressure, which is called rarefaction. Rarefaction is is like you 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 kind of have this low pressure area and then it bounces back obviously so if you see the the figure two is is that you ended you added the sorry you um had the lower filled in the lower uh, pressure area and then it goes back and then bounces uh, obviously because of the this the um spring action and it, at that point it compresses the air you could see that the the, the um the molecules of air is comp compressed there, so, and and this this vibration goes on for a period of time. Obviously, with a drum, it's very quick; like you hit it and then it, it stops vibrating. 
but if you use a string like a violin for example it, it continuously vibrates and then the sound goes on forever so not forever obviously until uh, as, as you play so um but but the thing is you see it, it needs material it needs something like air water um and 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 the density of that material the temperature of that material and in the air case it humidity of that material affects the the propagation of the sound um so it's very interesting actually I, probably when i was a child i i used to do that like you know you put your ear into the to the um to any table or something and you realize that the sound is extremely high like when you even when you touch the um the table it, it kind of vibrates that's because um air is actually not a nice material to pass on the the vibrations but but wood is it's metal is even better so people put their ears onto rails for example and see the trains coming and actually it's very fast as well because it's denser so the uh, the molecules be, are, are very close together Anyway, I, I don't want to go into into all this, but the main thing is that we are passing the this this energy via air in our normal circumstances, right? You know, when you have speakers, when you have headphones, like like what I'm doing now, you all all you use air to to pass on that that energy. But the thing here is is like, okay, like how it works. It's not like uh, the energy can be transferred in various ways. It's not like a you you you. Trigger, um, pull the trigger and, and send the bullets from a from a uh, from a gun or something. The 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 particles do not propagate; they stay where they are, but just vibrate. So you can see from this this interesting um, uh, say kind of animation is that a, a certain particle, like for example the red one over there or red ones over there they just vibrate they just go back and forward so that's why when you get in front of a speaker it doesn't actually um act as a fan right to uh to cool you down it you don't feel that actually there is a way that you can do it but let's not go in there so the the thing is it is um it, it it's a vibration so it's a it's it's a series of compression and rarefaction rarefaction compression rarefaction that is transmitted through the vibration from one molecule to the other. Um, it's very much like the, the water. So when you throw a, a, um, a stone on the water, it doesn't just send the water outside. It, it creates ripples on the water. Um, so they just vibrate, basically. So I'll, I'll kind of um, show you a, a little bit of like a simulation of this. So um, you could see that the... The molecules kind of work. So if I if I do this, that will be better. Um, maybe I could do it like maybe I could change the frequency so you can see that a a a, um, a sound that it's like rare uh, with the rarefaction. It has this lower density of molecules, and then when it's compressed, it has a higher density of of molecules. Um, so it, it's kind of a you don't realize that but this is this is what is going on uh, on in the air when you hear sound and it reaches basically it, it just gets transferred transferred and until it reaches your ear ear canal and to the um, to the eardrum and and that vibrates the eardrum and then you hear the sound it, but it's not as simple as that so I'll go into detail and see see where where I'm coming from Okay, so um, in in I, I I don't want to bore you with details, and I'm not going to get into any ma maths or anything. But the um, but I found really interesting with physics is that it always tries to model the um, the a, a natural phenomena like sound, like um, like uh, light or anything like that. So that it can make calculations on it, it can understand it, and so on. And in the case of sound, it's actually pretty good. Uh, there's a pretty good model about the sound, and and it actually applies to explain everything um, that we can, um, you know, we can calculate and and so on. So that's that's why we got very good quality systems that can capture the sound that can uh, process it, store it, and, and, and reproduce it. 
Um, so this model is, is, is really, really nice and really precise. Now, maybe you could say precise, but, you know, um, it, it's very useful, let's say. So how is it, st how, how that, is, um, that is designed? So first of all, as you could see from, uh, as you, you've seen from the, the previous um, simulation like this, it's kind of like a, 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 a wave. And, and the good thing is the, 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 the compression is, um, can be represented as a high mark a high point in, in, a, in a wave diagram, let's say, and the rarefaction, which is the, you know, the less, um, sorry, the, the, um, the reduced um, pressure can be shown as, as the low, low point. And, and between that, it's kind of cycles, right? And, and there are some, some parameters that, that is affecting this. One is the amplitude which we will cover first. So the, the higher the amplitude, the higher the sound is, the louder the sound is. So um, that's, that's one aspect of it. It's uh, normally, uh, the unit of that is normally called decibels, which I found every, most of the people who are using it do not understand what it is and, and, and how it came from and how it's used. So I, I will explain that in detail. Um, it's named after Alexander Graham Bell, interestingly. Uh, when he's doing the telephone, he found out that you need a, a kind of amplitude unit. Anyway, um, the second one is frequency, which is how many, um, how many cycles of this in a certain period of time, which is a, a, a one, uh, one minute, which called be, uh, sorry, one second which is a period, if you like. Um, so one over the period, well, inverse of the period is, is frequency. So the repetitions per second, and it's, uh, it, the unit is Hertz, uh, which is after um, a German mathematician, Henrik Hertz. Um, the third one is the wavelength, which is what is the, the distance? I, I'm talking about the actual physical distance between the same point on the on on the on the wave so it could be when it's crossing the zero point or it could be on the crest or it could be on the trough so it's as essentially what is the way and and wavelength is so important especially when it comes to acoustics um so so you need to understand and and how we perceive um like the location uh and and so on that that's all all related with the wavelength i'm not going to go into detail on this but i'll just cover very basically because I'm not planning to go to acoustic stuff. Um, the, the next one is um, the phase. Phase is the starting point in time for this wave, right? So it could be shifted, go back and forward. So I'll, I'll very quickly demonstrate this um, to you um, for, uh, yeah, you know, how, how changing these parameters affect, affect the wave. And, and you can imagine that uh, looking at the the molecules right this this bit the the crest and the trough is is compressed or or uncompressed or or uh, rarefacted so if i if i change the amplitude you see that the the wave actually goes bigger um and, and it's steeper as well the um so and if you try if i change the frequency of it it goes like there are many cycles within the same time frame, right? And if I change the phase, it will shift in time. See? So it will shift in time. So this is the model that we will be using to understand what sound is and how it works. Okay? And, and but believe me, you, you, you know, th th this works really well when we're trying to analyze things, when we try to understand... Um, for example, how we can level a recording, right? Um, so that's why I want to I want to go and cover um, the 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 the, the, uh, the maths of sound. Let's say uh, I'm not going to say, but this is the just just for reference. This is the sine wave equation that is defining that. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. All right, the first thing, amplitude. Um, 
so the the sound pressure is is so interesting that I found when I found this I I found it amazing. I'm not sure if you if you do, but it's just like just imagine, right? You are you you you're in the middle of an ocean or a big you know like uh, where you are, like in the Mediterranean, and and the, the the sea is very calm, no waves on it, and you throw a stone, right? The the actual depth of the the sea is, is could be so so big, like you know maybe forty meters, fifty meters, I don't know, maybe less, but the ripples are very small, right? You know maybe a few centimeters when you when you throw a stone. That is exactly what's going on when you think about the sound pressure, but reverse, right? Rather than in the bottom, it's actually reversed on the top. So the atmospheric pressure, the atmosphere is putting a lot of pressure to us and we, we're kind of used to that and the unit of pressure is pascal uh, which is again french maths guy um it doesn't matter but you know it's it's a pressure so um the the exact figure for the atmospheric pressure is 101,325 pascals right you don't need to memorize this or know this but but just imagine like there's 10 to 12 kilometers of air obviously getting less dense as we go up, but on us, and it's pushing us. The sound is just a ripple, like like the stones that, that, like the stone throw, like the waves that's created or the ripples that's created when you throw a stone to the ocean or to, to the sea. It's just that. So we're just, play, we're just creating a ripple on that atmospheric pressure. And the reason I, I put this number in is, is not so, so that you, you know this, You'll forget that after this slide, I guess. But but the important bit is that the 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 sound that we can hear or perceive, the minimal sound, is a ripple that is of 0 0.00002 pascal change on this big pressure. So we are so sensitive that only this change we can we can hear. This much change. So just imagine like 101, 3, 2, 5, point zero 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 two, but one zero I missed. Anyway, um, and this one, by the way, is can only be detectable in an anechoic chamber, like you get used to the silence and, and all that. Um, so kind of at, at that point, the air molecules only vibrate not larger than an area, not larger than their own size. So it's ex extraordinarily... Uh, you know, it's extraordinary that we can hear that sound by our ears. So our ears are extremely um, uh, sensitive to, to sound, to, to ripples on that big atmospheric pressure. Actually, if, if you're diving, you would know that when you dive, you just, you, your, your, your eardrums hurt, right? Because of the change in the pressure. So we are actually pretty, pretty good at that. So, but, but we don't normally have those kind of sounds because the normal... Um, uh, sound pressure within within our standard lives is not that that is not in that level. It's kind of in that level, like hundred times better, hundred times larger. So, for 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 example, me probably speaking one meter or two meters from you, um, kind of creating that kind of ripple, like 0 0.002 Pascal. Um, but if you take it to the extreme, the threshold of threshold of pain is 200 pascals. So if we create a, a pressure uh, ripple of 200 pascals, then it, it actually we start, our ears start hurting and, and we, can have, um, we can have issues with, with our ears, like permanent uh, hearing problems. So if you look at this scale, it's from 0 0.0002 to 200, which is 10 million times. So that is, I found this to be amazing, right? But if I chart this on a, on a scale, so the zero, zero point, whatever, that one, small one, is theoretical minimum. Um, and it's kind of a quiet room, like really kind of an echoic chamber, a quiet home, about two, ten times better, uh, sorry, ten times more, uh, someone speaking, yeah, classical concert, and if you go to a club, then it's two Pascal and, and loud concert 20 and the threshold of pain is 200. If I chart this, this is the chart. So you could see that this is this doesn't help as well. And, and also how many uh, zeros you can easily forget. 
So this is not the Pascal, it's not the right unit to use um, for, for explaining the sounds or for, for measuring the sound uh, level, if you like. Because on most of the cases, we are around here, this area. And if you look at this is where we are, and it's just like a very small part portion, and it, it doesn't really scale well, well. So Graham Bell came up with this idea that, oh, this is logarithmic. This is not linear. Let's, let's use a logarithmic scale. So I don't know how many of, of you are familiar with linear logarithmic. And I'm guessing when you came to the sound design department, you were not thinking like, okay, someone will tell me about linear and logarithmic on, on math, maths and so on. But the good thing is, linear is, is very simple, right? You know, you, you, um, if you're driving, right, you, just, you, you, you step on, a, um, on an accelerator and, accelerator and it's, it's basically the, the car speeds up. That's linear for you. But if you're talking about a pandemic, and we recently have an earthquake, as you know, the Richter scale, they are logarithmic. So they are, they're changed by multiplication, not by adding. So, um, and the sound power and sound pressure are logarithmic, as you can see from this chart, right? It just goes on zero, 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 nearly zero, and then all of a sudden shoots up to 200. So... So what, what basically is, 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 is what's needed is that you need to take the log of that logarithm of that pressure and use that as the unit, okay? So I'm not going to bore you with the logarithm, logarithm and so on. You can probably use your calculators and so on. But very quickly, if you got um, two dots, uh, if you look at the example, um, uh, like two... Um, decimal points after the uh, the dot you got minus two one decimal point minus one no zero one zero um like ten one hundred uh two zeros the logarithm of that logarithm of that is two so it's pretty simple actually um so it depends on how many zeros uh, either on this side or that side of the of the decimal point so that's the good thing, right? Um, if, if we kind of create a logarithmic unit for the differences in sound pressure, we will avoid large numbers, lots of zeros, and it will be in line with our perception. So the way that we do it is we take the minimal pressure, 0, 0.00 whatever, that one, and then whatever we want to represent, we just divide, divide that by, by this minimum number. So, and we call the, we take the logarithm of this number and we call this bell, which is, which is named after Alexander Graham Bell. The, the good thing is that it, um, they, sorry, not the good thing, but the bad thing is not, it, it doesn't actually, uh, is a good unit to, this, to, to explain the sound because the, it, it's generally zero point something. So we multiply it with 10. It's like meter, decimeter, like we multiply decimeter by 10. We do that for, for bell, and we call it decibel. So it's 10 times log for P over P0. P0 meaning the minimal level that we can hear. That's what decibel is. So the key thing for you to take from this is it's a logarithmic scale. It's not like... Um, uh, it's not like the, the linear things that we were used to use. And this has big importance because when you're using anything like a DO, like um, a, a digital audio workstation or anything actually uh, with levels on it, it is almost always um, described with decibels. And, it, and you need to understand why it is, it is called decibel and how it's, how it's working. So I, I, I've spoken enough, basically. But the, the thing is, if you look at the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the chart, when, when, I, when we turn the, pro, the previous numbers into decibels, you get a very, very nice scale. Look, zero is the theoretical minimum, right? 20 is the quiet room. 40 is the quiet home. 60 and so on. It just goes on. And a loud concert is 120. And, and, and the threshold of pain is 140 so but when you plot that it's a linear scale all of a sudden because we changed the logarithmic value or entity 
in, into a linear scale that we understand and can memorize. So, or not memorize, but can, can um, re, you know, relate to it, let's say. It's easier to remember these numbers than 0. 0.000 something. Okay, so the, the important bit is like, for example, um, when you say, oh, I, I've just changed um, the, the decibels, so for example, in a DAO, right, the, I don't know what you use, but like if you, if you reduce the volume with as 60, sorry, as, as six decibels, you have to understand what that means, right? Three decibels, what that means. So I'll cover to, I'll come to that. Um, sorry, I, I missed that. But decibel, um, there's something else that I, I just want to talk to, uh, talk to you about. The decibel, as you can see, is defined as a, a minimal number uh, dividing a, the number that we're looking at. Um, so, as I said, it's logarithmic of P over P, P0. Okay, so I'm not going to go into this one, but the good thing is, it is a, a ratio. So, you can have a, any, any unit with a ratio defined in um, in in, um, uh, in 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 decibels, which is which is great. So one so for example, one percent is a ratio, right? One over hundred, and if you if you take the log of that, it's it's minus forty decibels. So um, so if someone says, oh, there is one percent distortion in this. In, in this in this um, signal or something, then it means that the level of that is minus forty dB over the the maximum value. So you see, th this is actually pretty nice way to explain things. So um, for example, if a system, if a if a equipment has a um, THD plus N, which is total harmonic distortion plus noise, which is a number that is given in the specs. Um, uh, is 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 like 0 0.000154 145 sorry then it's roughly 117 decibels minus actually i made a mistake here minus 170 so that means you know it's 117 decibels below the maximum so you can now relate right what about 117 decibels so if you think about it it's so um it it's so small the, the 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 distortion that even when you turn the whole thing out loud to a loud concert level it still is theoretical minimum quiet room level so you won't hear it so that's the way that you should think about you know how to relate the the levels and and so on um was as, as, as we're using decibel i will come we'll, we'll, you know we, we will come to some of the uh, some of the use cases here uh, shortly, but that's that's the idea. But one thing is that because decibel is a ratio, you need to put a unit to it. And it, I don't want to go into the reasons, but if you um, if you're using it for, for power, you multiply it by ten. If you use it for voltage, current, pressure, that kind of stuff, you 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 you, um, you multiply it by twenty. Um, and there are there are various different ways to to use uh, the the decibels, but the one that we are focusing on is SPL, which is the sound pressure level, which we discussed. That's like we change the Pascal to to um, uh, to decibel. It could be used for voltage, and even the full uh, the digital systems use that. So it, if you see dBFS, it's full scale, meaning the maximum digital signal that could be generated is zero and then you go down from that and mostly in your in in any of your applications that you use um the digital applications i mean this will be the one that is using you're using for db okay so let's let's do some um uh, some tests so basically what does that mean right okay yeah i, I see what the, the db is but what is the change that is uh, that we we need to understand? Um, so how it how it's perceived, let's say, on the changes. So eight to ten dB dB change is is the loudness um, is it kind of doubles for us, although the pressure does not double, 
but but the feeling of the loudness, like how loud we're hearing music or or sounds, doubles um, when you when we change the sound pressure eight to ten dB. Um, so and and, and basically um, to to reflect it, for example, to power terms. So if you got a an amplifier that is one watt, one watt, sorry, uh, in order to change it for 10 decibels, you need to change it to 10 watts or 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 100 to 1000. So it's like the, the that much. So it's like the 10 times, if you like, the power. Um, 6 dB is a is an interesting one because everyone uses that. This is the twofold dif difference uh, on the sound pressure. So the sound pressure doubles when you have 6 dB, um, or you half the distance from the source. So there's a there's a for example there's a loudspeaker let's say, and you're listening it from one meter. If you go to two meters, the sound increase the sound sound goes down um, uh, two times or oh, sorry half halves. And the and the uh, the SPL is minus six dBs, so or you you get closer, what um, like half the distance, it gets six dB higher. Um, that is that is that could be perceived uh, very easily. Um, three dB is easily perceivable. Again, uh, it's 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 the double of the doubling the power of the amplifier or whatever you're using. And if you, doubling of the source, if you like. So if you got one speaker, right, and then you put another speaker exactly the same size and, and the same thing, the, the only change is three decibels. Can you believe? So you would imagine that it will be like a huge change, but no, it's, it's just three decibels. That's the, the change uh, for adding a second speaker onto any system. One dB change is very hard to, to perceive, but you can if you got... Uh, speak, um, headphones, you definitely can. 0 0.5, it's extremely hard. So I put the links here to test yourself, but I'll I'll show you uh, what that does that mean. So I'll I'll, I'll try to um, uh, show you the the difference. Uh, I I hope you can hear it. If not, then let me know. Uh, you know, okay. So so this is a. A, a test, uh, a blind testing um, uh, site, if you like, or or a or a blind test. So you can see if you can perceive the changes, like six dB up and six dB down. So flat is like it, there's no change, meaning it starts uh, with with a level and it doesn't change the level. Whereas up means you, it starts with a level and then adds a six dB. So let me let me show you. So let's 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 do this. Um, can you hear it? by the way yes we can hear okay so this is flat meaning it doesn't change let's see how it goes up um i i hope you you perceive the the, the difference uh it, it just basically it goes up that's by six decibels okay so it's two fold the, the sound pressure so the sound pressure doubled interestingly and this is going down And um, when we do, uh, like when we work on the radio, we at least reduce the, um, because of the loudness perception, we reduce, for example, the, 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 vo the volume by six decibels so that it's kind of in par with, with, the, with the people speaking. Um, so yeah, that's, that, is the, um, that is the idea. Okay, and let's see. By the way, my my slideshow somehow stopped, so I need to restart that again. Just a sec. Okay, so let's let's try three now. Let's see how that goes. Um, so I'll do the up first. Um, did you hear the difference? Uh. Tina, can you please do it again? We had this kind of a sound problem here. Okay. I guess you should be able to hear it. Yeah. I, not, I not really? Yes. There is some kind of a... We hear the sound, but there is some... Distortion? Kind of distortion to it. Um, 
I think it happens when you switch the screens. So just can you please try it again and let, we'll see. Um, okay, I'll try. Let me see. Okay, that's hundred percent. Maybe I'll lower the, the volume of that. Let's see how it goes. Did you hear this it? one? This one worked very well. Okay, um, so okay. that's probably because of the fact that the I've I've used max um, maximum volume which also which didn't help i guess okay and i'll reduce the volume of the other ones so that we don't have this problem again okay um so you can hear the difference between 3db up and down right um so let's see if you can do this for with 1db it's very easily um not very but you know easily recognizable or perceived if you have headphones so i'll try that um listen carefully It's go it went up and this one's down. Hard to detect, right? Detect, right? Um, can you hear that? Um, I'll do it again. Very hard to detect. Um, I can detect up to 0 0.5 uh, with the headphones, not below that. Um, and you can you can test yourself what with this. This is a uh, test, so you basically listen to this, and then you you choose either up, down, or flat, and uh, it, it kind of creates your score when you're done with it. So yeah, it's 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 a very nice one. But the thing is, um, the 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 key takeout from or the key thing to understand from here is that we do not easily understand 1 db change and 0 0.5 change and and, and also um it depends on on, on when you're eqing or or you know EQ, using equalizer it depends on various things like how wide it is and so on so i'm not going to go into that but the thing maybe you the, the thing that you have to understand is that in order to change the um the sound level three by three db you need a second source or you need to double the amplifier power so you need to double the, the, the source of that in order to do 6 dB. Sorry, in order to um, increase it by twofold, you, you need to uh, increase or reduce it, um, reduce the uh, level by 6 dB. And if, if you want to feel like you're doubling the loudness, it, it's 8 to 10 dB. Those are the things that I think it's very important in terms of sound um, design and, 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 you know, um, sound, sound engineering. Okay, um, so if I, so that brings us to dynamic range. Um, dynamic range is the, the ratio between the largest and the smallest values that a certain quantity can assume. Okay, that's the definition. In our case, it, it could be used for various things. And, and for sound, obviously the maximum and the minimum levels of human hearing, for example, which we covered, is from zero to, if you remember, uh, 120 decibels. Okay, so that is the theoretical limit. Obviously, you can hear sounds that is 130, but you'll you'll damage your hearing, and and zero is is a bit um, is a, is a kind of averaging uh, or or an approximation. You can hear minus 10 for certain frequencies, um, but you know can't hear even 40 decibels for certain frequencies. So it's just a rough idea of like so it's not zero. But the thing is, this is important. The background noise that we, when we, for example, when I, if I come come over there and and try to um, check what um, uh, what that what a kind of um, uh, what's that called a the level of noise in the background, it's it's basically um, uh, like thirty, maybe forty percent, forty decibels. So. The background noise masks all the older sounds underneath that because it's it's there's a there's a constant noise in the background. So actually, the the practical range that we have is eighty to ninety decibels, starting from a hundred, going down to forty or something, 
30 to 40. But if you got a an isolated um, headphones, then it's different. Um, you can, you can you, that that range is 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 reduced uh, is increased. I, I put a link here, but we won't be able to test this because it, it will take a long. Uh, it you, you need to be very very uh, silent in order to if, you know. I, you need a headphones basically to test yourself about the dynamic range. But I have this link. I'll share the slides with you so you can have a look yourself. Um, dynamic range also used to indicate equipment capabilities. So when you're buying an equipment, you need to understand what is the dynamic range that it can support. Meaning, what is the noise level that the minimum sound, because it's the noise is the noise floor is the minimal um, level that it can produce sounds. Underneath, it's noise. So, and the highest level that it can produce. So that is also called dynamic range, and and, and it's it's used to. Um, understand uh, to the the qualities of the equipment that you're buying, and it's very important. Like if if the microphones, for example, if you want to buy a microphone or or use a microphone, you have to understand what is the dynamic range of that microphone. Um, you know when it goes to distortion, from which point that uh, beyond it goes to distortion. What is the noise level, or or you you connect that microphone into a a preamp. On, on any of your sound cards and so on, you have to understand what is the noise level so that you can understand what kind of a range you have when you're um, changing the volume of that microphone. So it's very, very important to understand that. Um, well, also, there is a when you, when you do recordings or distribute recordings, there are levels of dynamic range. Um, I'll... Uh, so some of well, most of you probably won't recognize what that, those things are, but generally speaking, they are now in in fashion. So um, cassettes are are back for some reason. I really don't understand. Um, and vinyls are definitely back. Uh, now it's officially past the CD uh, numbers, uh, the number of CDs that's sold. So vinyls definitely back. Um, and then we got the tape, tape meaning the big reel-to-reel -reel tapes that are used in studios for analog recording. Um, so if you look at the, the levels here, is that 52 decibels um, of, of the dynamic range. So if you think about a, a person, or a human being having 120, right, and then the practical being 80 to 90, this is very low. Hence, when you listen to cassette, I don't know how many of you listen to a, a cassette uh, recording. Um, that, that's the kind of standard that, that we have. So I still have them. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, I, I still have my, my cassettes here. Uh, so you can, yeah, those, those are the ones that we're talking about. Uh, I got my, uh, my, my recording machine here. Anyway, um, so it's it's it, so you, if you if you use that, you would know that there is a big there is a huge noise in the background. If there are no music, then you could see like you can sorry hear a sound going back in the background. Um, so I'm actually wondering how many I can't see you, but now at the moment, but how many of you actually listen to a cassette recording? Any idea? No. Oh, actually. Three three people. Wow. Okay. I'm pretty sure you listen to a vinyl, right? Yeah, everyone's nodding. Fine. And vinyl has its background noise, obviously because of the fact that the needle or the stylus, I should say, not the needle, stylus um you know, is is, is having this contact with the vinyl which codes cause the sound. Tape is the analog which we're not normally use. But there are some technologies that enhances that that dynamic range, like Dolby, DBX, noise re noise re reducing technologies, and you could see that from 52 to 72, it it actually goes goes up. Um, and and with the with most of the analog recordings that are done in studios, they're using noise reduction mechanisms, which goes which brings it to 105, right? 105 decibels. That is amazing because a normal CD recording is only 16 bits and it goes up to 96 decibels. It says 90 here for some reason, but it's 96 decibels. Uh, practically, it's around 90. That's much more than enough for our hearing, by the way. But that can go beyond tape recordings. Uh, that would go beyond the CDs on the tape recordings. So 
which is amazing. And obviously, we got 24 bits digital, which goes up to 138, which ex exceeds our limit of hearing. Okay. Well, this is a theoretical limit, by the way, because um, every bit uh, in, in, in a digital recording adds about 6.02 dBs. So when you multiply 20, 24 with, um, with 6, it's, it's somewhere like here. But the problem is that most of the analog equipment that you use, microphones, mixes, whatever, they, they stop at 125 because of the inherent electronic noises that's within those, like the, 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 the co components, electronic components have their own noise levels. So, 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 it, so having 24 is, is more than enough um, for, for recording purposes. Um, but what I suggest, though, is that having a larger dynamic range means you can have more space to, to play with when you're increasing or decreasing the, the level. So I would suggest that you should use uh, 24, dip, 24 bits when you're doing recordings, especially microphone recordings, because you don't want to push them too high. You, have to ha you want to have a headroom. That's why it's important that, that you understand the dynamic range. I hope that is clear. I'm trying to go a, a little bit fast, but you know, I'm uh, not sure how it's going. Okay. Um, well, one thing I think it's, it's quite important for every sound engineer, designer, absolutely important is the dynamic, understanding the dynamic range for recordings. That is so important that I, I can't, I can't um, stress more. Um, so, the loudness, the perceived loudness of a recording do, is, does not have, um, well, it has, but it's not directly related to the peak level in a recording. So the meaning like the, the highest sound that, that is in a recording is the peak uh, level, right? But it is not directly related with the loudness of that recording, okay? Um, so... So what what they've done is is a, a they've created a, um, a a database of almost um, all the recordings uh, in, uh, in 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 the uh, in the world, if you like. Well, not almost, but most of the stuff. Let's let's look at this, for example. Okay, I love Patti Smith's Easter, for example. That you could see that the um, the DR the dynamic range of that is about 11 okay um, which means that the highest and the lowest um, average is about 11 decibels right so so the, the which which is um, which is the, the lowest average and the highest average by the way highest peak sorry um, so this this thing is is that if it's higher then the recording has a big dynamic range so for a classical recording for example you can hear a a single violin playing at the same time you can hear a the full i don't know how many people but like you know with the timpanis and all that playing at the same time which is a very loud music right if the music comes uh, the the lowest sound the lowest ever average and the highest average gets to you know um approaches to each other let's say being closer to each other that means we are losing this dynamic range right everything sounds compressed okay i know this is not easy to to explain so i i've created a demo for you um and this is this is what generally speaking happens when 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 people produce music so i i think it will be relevant to um uh, to to what you're um uh you know what you're experiencing anyway so so i'll 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 use a a very familiar recording i'm uh, i know that you're you're young uh, but but this recording is is something that is so well known that i think i think you will recognize that instantly um and i'll i'll try to do a um uh a a, a quick um let me see Okay, I'll, I'll I'll try to do a a, a quick display. Um, sorry, I'm oh, not that one. Sorry, that one. 
Uh, okay, so I, you could see it, I guess, right? Um, so let me play this for you. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, can you hear it, uh, or is it too little, too low? Uh, we can hear it. Uh, let me let me very quickly try again. It's a bit low, though. Okay. Okay, maybe that's that should be okay. So so that's the level. I could I could bring it higher, but let, let's not do it. Um, so you see, this is this is Pink Floyd. Wish you were here. Um, that is produced in 1970s when there are no um, compression. Uh, well, there are some compression, but people generally don't use it. And, and it's, it's kind of um, li limited, let's say, um, to, um, to, to not sorry, limited. It's, it's kind of open to different um, nuances on the music. So you can see the play, the the uh, the point that I play is the acoustic guitar getting in with a with a with a quick solo, right? So okay, and you can see here it's loud, louder because of the whole or orchestra or the band is is getting in. Sorry, I I have to do this. So you could see that this is this is the whole uh, orchestra, but you could see the nuance right here. You, it, these are these are um, like loud, and this is not loud. Well, the trick is that people use these days is like make everything like um, loud, feels very loud, and the reason for it is like if you're gonna play it in Spotify, say right. It, it will be played right next to another song, right after another song. And if the level gets down, the perception of the, of the sound of the, or the quality of the sound is lower. Although it, it, it's, um, it has less dynamic range, le less nuance, it will feel much better. So the producers are, are pushing the limits to to make things or make things feel much louder and i'll i'll show you and probably you know this i mean you you've been working with this so i'll open a compressor very standard one okay and and i'll 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 try that um this this section um sorry i'll try this section let's say um okay so i'll try this section with and without the the compression so First, without the compression. Uh, you heard it, right? Yes, we heard it. Okay, and then I've now put the compression in, so you see the difference. Okay, now I'm going to use, um, I'm going to open, uh, turn it on and off so that you can see the difference. So you see now the guitar is much more cleaner, uh, clear. Sorry, but we lost we lost the uh, the the the, um, the nuance, the dif difference between the highest and the lowest. So with the compression, we're basically building, putting quiet noise, uh, quiet um, parts of the music or the sounds, and and make them louder. Okay, if we listen to this part though. Let's let's listen to that part, right? With and without the um, the, the compression. You see, there is no difference because well, there is some difference, but it's not perceivable. Um, it, it's because you only changing the level of the the compress uh, so the quiet sounds not the the loud ones but in at the end what you're trying to do is like to squeeze or compress the whole recording all the sounds into a very very small area okay that is why this dynamic range database is created so that people listening to music or producing music could understand which ones are compressed so that they don't have the nuances? And most of the pop songs these days 
are are like you know they don't even like they're like two um they have the dynamic range is two db you know like three dbs it's just like it never they don't never go quiet it, they're always loud okay and and i i tried to do a um i just wanted to do a uh a, a, an interesting uh in um experiment if you like can we do can we make uh wish you were here which is not that compressed a a very compressed um or sorry a very loud recording okay so what i'll do is i'll i'll play that without any any um any limiter which is the what i'm using at the moment to make it loud with gain but do not change the peak level so if i play this okay he, i don't know if you can see this but um over here you see the um that i play with the volume right just need just on um across the volume there is this peak one minus zero four it says so i'll play it So you can see the maximum level is 0 0.4. So what I'll do is I'll put a ceiling saying 0 0.4 dB, which is the, the the maximum level it can go to. And then I'll play with the gain so that it becomes louder and louder, right? So let's let's play with this. This is the first one is, is without uh, any... Excuse me, uh, excuse yeah. me sorry. Um, can sure. we have that, um, uh, that DAW screen a little bit bigger uh, we don't really see the numbers. Uh, you mean this, right? Yeah, this screen of the the, the logic screen. Yeah. Because currently we. What, what about that? Yes, it's much clearer. Okay, sorry about that. I mean, I I can't make this the other one bigger, but I could do this. So it's trust me, this was zero point four. So, <laughs> so I'll I'll play around and then see what 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 you say. So it's zero gain now. So I'm opening the um the um the the, the limiter, and and you can first thing is not there's no gain in, in it. So it's it's as 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 the original. So I'll move it to three decibels. Remember the change between three decibels, right? Like we did uh, before. So the three decibels is. Slightly enhanced. I'll I'll do six decibels. It's double the pressure. Remember? Okay, can't do it. Uh, here we go. Okay, there's some sounds coming out from my window. Apologies for that. Uh, okay. And I'll go for 10 decibels, which is, if you remember, it's the tw twice the, the volume, the, the perception of the loudness is twice, right? It's 99, 9.9 .9 is okay. So I'll do that, I'll play that. So it's much louder. So if I start from zero and do that, uh, you know, slowly, you'll see how how loud it gets without changing anything on the 0 0.4. By the way, it it never goes beyond 0 0.4 decibels. So all we do is we we upgrade the the bottom part to fill in the the top part, reducing the uh, the nuances of of the recording. Okay. So I don't. I hope you you heard the difference. Um, that, that that is very significant, and and without any any changes, any peaks, any distortion as as such. Uh, well, there might be some distortion, but you know, not a big one. So um, so I hope that that shows this. Um, you know, the the loudness wars, the dynamic range compression problem, because everyone thinks the loud is better. And for commercial reasons, the modern recordings have very, very low dynamic range. So 
my my uh, the thing to get out of this is as a as a sound designer, you have to be very very careful. If you're looking for nuances, you should not go into loudness wars with with people. If you're if you're looking to um, to do some commercial successful recordings, you have to be very careful. Uh, if you don't compress it, it will sound horrible when you compare it to the other other pop pop songs or something. So, which is a an odd trade off, unfortunately. Um, so I don't know if you got any questions before I go back. But yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, that's where it is actually. Um, so hope that helped. And and also we don't get banned from YouTube by playing <laughs> Pink Floyd because <laughs> that happens. Uh, that yeah. happens one to us. Uh, so but you yeah. look you looked at certain part. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's I, I've yeah. tried to do as minimal as possible, but yeah, for any time, any, anyway, sometimes you just get banned. Okay, um, so one thing is, is is here to take take away is that, um, and people always mistake this. Um, I don't know if you uh, if you heard about this, but um, if depending on the medium, depending on if it's a streaming platform, if it's something like a um, uh, a, a vinyl or, or, or something, the, the, the medium, different masters are generated. So the mastering thing is, is so important and it's very hard to do, by the way. It's an art form, in my opinion. Dip and then there are different. So people compare vinyl with, with say, some, some something from Spotify and they're just like, oh, this sounds horrible or that sounds better. No, you're comparing two different things because it, it, it's up to the master's, master engineer, mastering engineer to create a master for a vinyl, for a lossy digital, for a lossless digital, for high-res, so on and so forth. So technical limitations define that. And, and, and the, the mediums for playing, like, you know, if, you go, if you're going to put a streaming uh, album out, it could be listened on, on a microphone. Even my, my daughter used to listen it from the phone, right? You know, like directly from the phone speaker, which is, I don't know, like half a centimeter uh, big, like, you know, it's, it's awful speaker. And, and, and the same, same recording can be played on a hi-fi system. So you have to find a middle ground between those things. But if you create a vinyl, vinyl is, will, be def will be played by definition in a hi-fi system with a, with a proper, um, proper uh, turntable and all that. So keep that in mind, dynamic range, is, is so important concept in sound design and, and sound engineering that it could be it could it, it defines your hearing the equipment the qualities of an equipment and and the the nuances or or the um the, the, the yeah the nuances of a recording uh, and and depending on the media so that's that's i think that's important um okay um well we can go into this, um, but maybe we can, um, should we take a short break or what do you like? Um, break. Um, yeah. Or I could like. do the frequency bit and then do a short break if you want. Um, okay. Um, like, let's go for a 15 minutes or um, let 15 minutes more and then take a break and then, um, and then continue if that's okay. Yes. Okay, let's have okay, a... Okay, let's go for the frequency. So yeah. we, we covered the amplitude, okay? Now the second part of the model was frequency, if you remember. So re frequency is the number of cycles or the, the repetitions of a ripple within a certain amount of time, in this case, um, a, a one second. And it's used, but it's, it's, it's a unit is hertz. And um, the middle A, for example, the, the A note is 440 hertz. Okay, well, in some cases it could be 442 and 43, depending on the tuning, but by definition it's 440 hertz. And the hertz scale, or sorry, the frequency scale is logarithmic. So you could see that, for example, 440, and it's, you, when you divide it by 2, it's 220. When you multiply it by 800, uh, 2, it's 880. But you see, on the scale, when it represents it, it is it's the same distance. And, and when you multiply a frequency with two, it's called octave, you know, oct oct octave of the, of the frequency. So, um, so for example, um, 
440 hertz, uh, the octave, like one octave of the 440 is 880. So, so essentially, this is not a linear scale. And, and, and this is a very useful diagram, by the way. It's, it shows you the range of uh, frequencies that a certain instrument's vocals or sounds occupy. So for a piano, this is the, the um, a standard 88-note piano. That is the range, right? And then you got the vocals, um, the winds, you know, the strings and drums and so on. The interesting bit here is the drums because, you know, the big drums, like with the big sounds like the bass drum always thought as as like having a bass uh, note but it's not the case actually the kick drum goes even to see it's like 340 because of the attack the transient within that noise which we will cover but but the main thing is is that this is a um this is the um a, a logarithmic scale as well because our hearing is logarithmic um so I'll try to do a, a demo. So let's see, open a, um, copy the link address and do this just a sec. Sorry, I should have been prepared. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, so let me reduce the, the sound of that. It's just gonna sound harsh. Yeah, you can, I hope you can hear this, right? Sorry, um, can you hear it? Um, there is some kind of glitchy sounds, and I don't know if it's from your end or our end. Uh, well, there's so many, uh, so much uh, resampling going, so I think, <laughs> I think that might be the case. <laughs> so, um, I, I, to be honest that, with you, this is not the bad, the good environment for the um, sound uh, demos, but you know, let's stick with it for the time being. Apologies. Anyway, this is not for the quality of the sound, but the the uh, the, level, the the frequency of the sound. So let me do this. Right, this is A, the note in Turkish La, and uh, if I multiply it by two, it's an octave. So you see, it's the same tone, but one octave higher. And the same goes for one octave lower. I don't know if you can hear this one. Can you? Does it? You got you got Yamaha HS8, right? Yes. <laughs> it goes it goes to 50, 50 hertz. So yeah, yeah exactly. you should be able to hear it. Uh, not 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 the one that one though. That I can hear with my okay i can i can actually yeah, feel it i can my hand is close to the speaker and yeah you, you know, can feel it probably right. yeah actually this is called guest ejector i don't know if you know that if if you create a sound that is lower than 20 uh, 20 hertz no one can hear it but they can feel it and there is this kind of uneasy feeling about this. So when you try to get rid of your guests, like they come because they are, like they come to your house and they don't leave. On, it's until very late. You just turn this on. <laughs> so I didn't know like that. that. Uh, yeah, subsonics, right? Uh, subsonics, yes, yes. <laughs> that's that's subsonic. Actually, that's a good one. Subsonic is is the frequencies under twenty, and infrasonics are the twenty frequencies over twenty thousand, twenty k. So uh, yeah, which I I don't hear by the way, but anyway. So um, okay, so let's. Uh, Tina, um, I, yeah. I have a suggestion. Actually, uh, can we have yeah. a break now? So uh, and then we try to somehow find a solution for this sound issue. If you have yeah, more, sure. do you yeah, have absolutely. more demonstrations um, afterwards? I, I, I do, but I don't have to do a, a, everything. I'll, I'll, I'll show some stuff. Um, 
with with the with the frequency analyzer and so on. So there's not much to hear, to be honest with you. I'm not going to do the masking demo. There's no way that you can you can get that without any headphones. So I'm, I'll, I'll just explain that, and and you're free to to test it yourself with using any dough or anything. So. Mm -hmm. But just have a look. Uh, let's give a break okay. then, because we are, we're already 15 minutes, so yeah. Yes, okay. Okay, uh, perfect. So um, so when should we go? come back to 2.30? Uh, or 30, maybe... Yes. Let's 30, say 2.30. Okay. Yeah. okay, fine. All right, thanks Thanks for listening. And um, please take take notes. If you've got any questions, we'll, we'll cover them at the end. So if you're not bored. <laughs> okay. Cheers then. See you in, in 50. Well, that was not a bad shot, but this is not how it all started. I've always been dreaming of becoming a filmmaker. I believe that a good movie can make our world a better place. But I need to learn more. Life is like a video game. It's fun and it's challenging at the same time. Every accomplished mission leads to another one. Look at these harmonious moves. A perfect combination of mind and body, absolute freedom of self-expression. Art imitates life, and nature is the ultimate masterpiece. To design like a master, you must learn the basics and then go beyond. But how? So our journey began to this magical place, Cyprus. We found our voices. We heard each other's songs. We captured our moment and we painted our lives. Not to mention the fun. We illuminated our future. We learned from the past. The craft and the knowledge came together to create art. There's a lot to discover and a lot to be done. We were taken by hand, one by one. The journey goes on and the future is bright. The seeds we planted will give years of beautiful blossoms. So our dreams came to life and life became like a dream. The magic is real, only if you believe. The journey we began finally came to an end. But it's time for a new start. Now, let's take another shot.
Well, that was not a bad shot, but this is not how it all started. I've always been dreaming of becoming a filmmaker. I believe that a good movie can make our world a better place. But I need to learn more. Life is like a video game. It's fun and it's challenging at the same time. Every accomplished mission leads to another one. Look at these harmonious moves. A perfect combination of mind and body, absolute freedom of self-expression. Art imitates life, and nature is the ultimate masterpiece. To design like a master, you must learn the basics and then go beyond. But how? So our journey began to this magical place, Cyprus. We found our voices. We heard each other's songs. We captured our moment and we painted our lives. Not to mention the fun. We illuminated our future. We learned from the past. The craft and the knowledge came together to create art. There's a lot to discover and a lot to be done. We were taken by hand, one by one. The journey goes on and the future is bright. The seeds we planted will give years of beautiful blossoms. So our dreams came to life and life became like a dream. The magic is real, only if you believe. The journey we began finally came to an end. But it's time for a new start. Now, let's take another shot. Well, that was not a bad shot, but this is not how it all started. I've always been dreaming of becoming a filmmaker. I believe that a good movie can make our world a better place, but I need to learn more. Life is like a video game. It's fun and it's challenging at the same time. Every accomplished mission leads to another one. Look at these harmonious moves. A perfect combination of mind and body, absolute freedom of self-expression.
Art imitates life, and nature is the ultimate masterpiece. To design like a master, you must learn the basics and then go beyond. But how? So our journey began to this magical place, Cyprus. We found our voices. We heard each other's songs. We captured our moment and we painted our lives. Not to mention the fun. We illuminated our future. We learned from the past. The craft and the knowledge came together to create art. There's a lot to discover and a lot to be done. We were taken by hand, one by one. The journey goes on and the future is bright. The seeds we planted will give years of beautiful blossoms. So our dreams came to life and life became like a dream. The magic is real, only if you believe. The journey we began finally came to an end. But it's time for a new start. Now, let's take another shot. Well, that was not a bad shot, but this is not how it all started. I've always been dreaming of becoming a filmmaker. I believe that a good movie can make our world a better place, but I need to learn more. Life is like a video game. It's fun and it's challenging at the same time. Every accomplished mission leads to another one. Look at these harmonious moves. A perfect combination of mind and body. Absolute freedom of self-expression. Art imitates life, and nature is the ultimate masterpiece. To design like a master, you must learn the basics and then go beyond. But how? So our journey... Hey, <laughs> it, uh, I can't hear you. Nope, still cannot. Nope. Mm. Oh, 
I can't hear. Uh, let me see. Uh, can you talk? No. Still, I was able to listen. I was able to hear the video. Uh, are you so? Let me see. I haven't changed anything actually. Can you hear me or also I'm dead. I'm trying to send a chat message, but I'm not sure if it goes in. Inobe, can you hear me? No. Well, that was not a bad shot, but this is not how it all started. I've always been dreaming of becoming a filmmaker. I believe that a good movie can make our world a better place, but I need to learn more. Life is like a video game. It's fun and it's challenging at the same time. 
Every accomplished mission leads to another one. Look at these harmonious moves. A perfect combination of mind and body, absolute freedom of self-expression. Art imitates life, and nature is the ultimate masterpiece. To design like a master, you must learn the basics and then go beyond. But how? So our journey began to this magical place, Cyprus. We found our voices. We heard each other's songs. We captured our moment and we painted our lives. Not to mention the fun. We illuminated our future. We learned from the past. The craft and the knowledge came together to create art. Hey. Um, no, I can't hear you. It looks like your microphone is off or something. I could have heard. I, I I've heard the uh, the video. Okay, can you hear us from yes from now? Yes, you can, can hear, hear me. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? We try to find a workaround, um, so I'm not going to speak that much. Um, so please resume. Okay, all right, <laughs> no worries. Um, okay, doc. So, where were we? Okay, so you could see my screen, right? Okay, I'm I I'm continuing. Is that okay? Okay. Yep, that's fine. All right, so we've been covering the frequency spectrum and um, all I could say is that we we got, get to, um, uh, we, we, we cover... Yes, um, can you continue, please? I, I am, I'm talking. Can you hear me? Um, I can see that I send the signal is in. Can you hear me? I don't hear you, but you can hear me, I guess. <laughs> yes, we can yeah. hear you. Please continue. Okay. All right. I'll I'll continue where we left. So okay, where so the next bit is is I I, I will be I mean you will be seeing a lot of uh, diagrams and sorry like charts and everything. So how can we visualize the audio on, on a piece of paper, basically, or on a computer screen? So there are a few ways, but I'll just very, very quickly explain the two main things. One is the, um, the frequency graph, which is like the x-axis is frequency and the, and, and the y-axis is magnitude. So I'll show you, in, in, uh, show you this in, in action. So, um, so bear with me. But, but the idea is that the level of a sound... Uh, is shown uh, against the frequency here, right? That's that's how it's um, how how that that's visualized. So, for example, if you um, if if you uh, record a sound or record a music or something, and then you put it into this frequency um, uh, graph, then you'll see the response of this, like, you know, which frequencies are, are populated, which frequencies have most and so on. So that's that's really important because you want to understand how much bass in there and how much of treble and, and, and general level and, and the, the, um, the balance of the recording and so on, right? So, um, but with all sorts of different um, implica uh, or applications of that. This one is a time graph. 
and uh, it's based. It's again on the y side. It's um, uh, some amplitudes it could be dB, uh, SPL, voltage, or something. And against it's plotted against time, which shows the wave, the form of the wave that is uh, the that the sound wave or or whatever the wave is um, that that uh, in the graph that is shown in the graph. So you can imagine those peaks are, are the, um, the, the compression and, and the, the troughs are the, the rare, rarefaction that we, we discussed earlier. So um, the reason I show this is that I want to show you um, uh, how things are actually when we, when we do an analysis of this data. In order to do that, I just want to explain what is a tone? Um, and tone is interesting because um, it defines a combination of factors about the sound. So when we say, oh, what is the tone of the sound? We're talking about uh, various factors, which, is, um, which could be classified as pitch, tread, timbre, and envelope. So, when we, so the, the, the tone is a combination of that. So every object resonates in a different way, um, depending on the shape and the material of that object. So um, we want that to be, uh, we want that uh, the, the, uh, the, the we, we play with the shape uh, we, of, of a, any, any object to, to make the resonant frequency for instruments. So for example, a guitar uh, is tuned in such a way that the string resonates in the correct note. So what um, so what I tried actually is is, um, is is to bring you a an object that is tuned in a certain way. So if I show that in camera, okay, this is a meditation bowl from Tibet, right? That's very standard meditation bowl. If I if I try to hit it, um, then uh, you see that when I try to hit it with a with a wooden whatever handle or something. Yeah, you. I guess you heard the sound. So that's the sound it makes. Okay, so that is the resonant sound of of this this specific object, based on its material and the design. So what we want is is resonance for musical instruments, for equipment that is sound producing or recording or anything like that. We don't want that. We don't want anything to resonate because if they resonate, then it adds to the character of the sounds. We want any system, like mixers, microphones, speakers, anything, should not change anything around the sound uh, or change the characteristics of the sound. So we don't want the resonance. So it's, it's, there's an irony here that we want resonance for the musical instruments, but no resonance for things like loudspeakers, microphones, and so on. Okay? So let's get into what, what you mean by tone of, of, of um, uh, you know, like the aspects of it. So one thing for the Turkish students there, um, there is this, uh, like a few words in Turkish, there is this kind of confusion between what tone means in English and what ton means in Turkish. So when we say ton in Turkish, we generally mean the pitch, meaning the... the the level, you know, the frequency of the sound, right? So I'll 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 quickly do a um, a demo of this. So um, so this is the, the so the tone word is is different than the pitch one, but let's very quickly um, uh, let's see. Yeah. So if I if I choose this is the one that I showed you the the, the tone generator. So if I choose A four, let's say, right? Um, okay, it doesn't play any sound. Why is that? Uh, I don't hear it. Just a sec. Hmm, that's not nice. Hold on, maybe there is something wrong on my side. Uh, hold on. Sina, we tried to fix something. Can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, finally. Okay. Well, the thing is. But now we lost this, your uh, system sound, I guess. Yeah. yeah I For don't know why. 
I don't know why. Just a sec. Let me try that one. Because I can see that I'm sending you that. Look back here. Yeah, let's see if I do that. No. Nope. Yeah, the victims of digital audio. Yeah, I, I mean, this is pretty complex anyway. Just a sec. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, that's due to the, um, the issue on the sound uh, of the website, I guess. Now you can hear it, right? Right, you can hear it. We can hear it with it's glitchy, but yeah, we can hear it. Yeah, but anyway, so okay. if I change the the pitch, meaning the the frequency, I change I can change the notes. So you see, I've started from C4, which is Do for, for Turkish, and then go melody. to D. Yeah, but I could pl <laughs> probably play some melody, but it's not the best one. Anyway, so if I, if I try to mix those, um, probably you can hear this, right? So if, let's, let's try to find out what that note is. It's not exactly there, but it's around this 554, probably. So it's like C sharp, five. Um, so yeah, so I mean, this is somewhere between C and C sharp. So not exactly there. You got, we got a 12 note scale here. So uh, with, with Western music. Anyway, um, so so in music, we show the tone with notes on a scale, right? You know, A, there could be multiple A's based on which octave it is and, and so on. Um, so the, generally speaking, the, the frequency that is loudest in a, in a, in a note, uh, sorry, in a, um, in a, in a sound is the, is, the co is, the, is the sound that determines the pitch of the sound. So I will explain what that means, and this is very, I think this is very important for, un, for, for you to understand, because that is the way the characteristics of the sound is defined. Um, I'll come to that. Um, but there, there are some sounds that, are, that it does not have any, any standard pitch, right? You know, like if you think about a cymbal, right, or a, or a crash cymbal or something like that, when you hit it, it doesn't create a certain pitch. It comes up with like lots of different um, pitches at the same time. So, so it says so some sounds that are like snare drum as well. It doesn't have a certain note. Well, snare drum has, but you know, well, you see where I'm coming from. So not as clear as a violin or, or a piano or a guitar or something like that. So, so the question is that if he, if he, if two sounds have the same pitch, like two instruments playing the same note or two singers singing the same uh, same song why they sound different they, they they should you know if the no, if pitch is the only thing that's defined it why why they're sounding different so let's let's talk about that one ah sorry i uh, yeah that's fine no no that's okay oops so one of the reasons for that is the envelope of the sound meaning some sounds um, just go like this is the the time graph as I showed you like right? time against magnitude so some sounds like a piano sound starts immediately or a drum sound and then fades slowly as time goes some sounds are not like that like a violin or trumpet or anything they just like start a little bit slow not like the piano and then go on, and you can see the vibrations, vibratos on the si on the violin, which the the player makes when when they um, when they play the play a certain notes. So you see the envelope of the notes, basically, is is one of the differences between between different instruments or different sounds. Um, so if you are synthesizing sound, I know you're sound designers, or you want to be sound designers. If you're synthesizing sounds, which you will do then this is defined in, with a certain standard called attack, decay, sustain, release. Um, and and it's, 
it's actually a, a, a simple thing um, to do. So attack is the time that it takes when you press a note or, or start the the, um, the note and where it will get to. Decay is is the, the, the time just right after it, what it will happen to the envelope. Sustain is when you hold the key or, or continue to make that sound, how it will behave. And then when you release the the note or stop making that note what will happen to it okay so how many of you are familiar with the attack decay sustain release should i do a demo or would it be i don't want to waste your time so um are you happy are, are do you, you know attack decay sustain release right okay well in that case let me let's not do that because right? that will be pretty standard um, and, and, and most of the synthesizers these days have that, um, especially analog ones. So you, you, I think you, you should be um, you should be familiar with that. All right. So the the timber is is the one that is that is not that um, uh, familiar with to everyone. So the timber of the sound is formed by a combination of, of frequencies that are resonating within that that specific object, okay, which is which is different. So you could see that a clarinet. So this one, so the first one is the main note, if you like. Um, the if you look at the bar graph, you can't see my pointer. So if you look at the uh, the the graph, the first one on the left is the main note of of that. Um, of the um, of that that instrument, and there are other frequencies that is all also in that um, in, in in that equipment uh, in that instrument that defines the sound of it. So if you look at clarinet, it's different than piano, it's different than violin. So the thing is, the actual timber is formed by ver the pitch, uh, the combination of resonant frequencies of of the 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 um this the sound that it that the, the a certain thing makes whatever that is and they have different magnitudes and when you change the magnitude it actually you know sounds different um this is very important to understand that a certain sounds let's say a4 we said 44 hertz if you play it on piano it doesn't only contain 44 hertz it contains all sorts of other things that you see here other frequencies okay i would like to display i would like to show you that by um by actually analyzing the meditation bowl that i showed you earlier okay so let's try this yeah okay so this is a frequency analyzer okay i've got my i'll, I'll show you like i've got my um uh, let's see. Uh, this is a um, this is a microphone. That's a calibrated microphone for analyzing any sound uh, that is um, that's created by us, me, or whatever. So let me show you like how how it's done. Um, so if I go and and start capturing, okay. Um, so you see that when I speak, uh, the the sounds that I make uh, creates all these different frequencies. So you see, this is the frequency scale from 20 to 20,000, which is our hearing range. And this is the, the amplitude in SPL. Uh, remember SPL? Um, the pressure level, sound pressure level in decibels, you see? So all the stuff that we now, we've we, we gone through, to, through it, 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 it's coming together actually. So when I speak, you see that uh, it, it, it changes all the time, right? So did I do any averages? No, none. Okay, fine. So if I stop talking, right, you'll see the noise level in my room with with the um, from this uh, from this microphone. So I'll stop for a sec. So you see that it's around. Um, like 650, you could say it reduces from 5k, 4k, from 50, 
uh, it has some bass on it and, and so on. So this is because my laptop is, is killing me, like it's running the fan. It's probably this fan noises over here somehow. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, the general thing. So let's see how, when we analyze the frequencies of this, of this meditation ball, how it will affect, how, what, what will be the effect of it. So I'll start capturing again. Yeah, and, and hit the, the meditation ball. So watch, please watch the frequencies that are, that are shown or that, that are highlighted um, when, I, when I, let me see, when I hit it. Okay, ready? Okay, you can see that this is still ringing. It's 5.30, I guess 5.39. So we said what? 5.54, so between 5.54 and 5.23, remember? We said, so it's actually the frequency of this, this meditation ball is, is exactly 5.39. I'll try again. Some cats are jumping out. See that is the frequency, the resonant frequency of this of this meditation ball. So you can analyze any object or acoustically your room to understand the um, uh, the the resonant frequencies in there, which will color your your music, your color your sounds, whatever the sounds you design, it's colored. So you can analyze that this way. You don't need, you don't need a microphone to do that. You can do digital analysis and so on. I'm not going to go into that, but that's the idea here. The basics is that a sound can be analyzed with the frequencies as well, um, as well as the um, the sound wave. But more importantly, we found the five three nine is the um, is the sound uh, sorry is the um, pitch of this of this thing but when i hit it you realize that there are other frequencies that show up and then and then reduced after a period of time based on the envelope right um okay yeah so i um, for some reason you can't see me right yeah now you can see I, I don't know why it, it did, but it, it went out. Anyway, so I'll, I'll, I'll hit again. Just watch the frequencies. That is multiples of this 532. So it's about like 1,000 something and then 2,000 something. See, these are the harmonics, they call it. I'll, I'll just put, I'll, I'll play again, right? Or hit again. And I'll hit and, and then stop so that you can see exactly what those frequencies are. Okay, ready? Okay, I missed that. Sorry about that. Just a sec. Okay, couldn't catch the whole thing, but I, I, this wasn't good enough. So you could see that it's not just the 539, but we also have... 1359 and what was this one 2440 so that those are the frequencies that create that sound the characteristics of the sound that we hear because of these and and you could see the envelope of that changing as well for each frequency separately so that is the reason that we hear different instruments in a different way their envelopes are changing, their frequency components are changing within those envelopes, even though they, the pitch is exactly the same, because the pitch is defined with the with the highest magnitude. Although this is not high, so it's when you when you probably when you just hit it, this one is the dominant. But then the the the, the one that remains, which is the sound we hear or the pitch we hear, is the five three nine, uh, which is around C to C sharp so let's let's try again so I hope that makes sense actually I, I don't know if that 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 explains but you could we can do this with a guitar we could do this with a um, so when you for example when you get an electric guitar and and 
and pick a clean sound of the electric guitar. There are very there are several um, components, the harmonical components. Um, but if you push it to the distortion limit, like you know, or or, or put a distortion uh, pedal or or a fuzz pedal or something, when you hit it, there's so many. Um, uh, these um, harmonics that came into it, changing the the characteristics of the guitar sound. That's how it works. So, so any any instrument can be analyzed as such. Um, so I hope that that makes sense. I don't know if you if you get that, but yeah. So I think I think they are a bit prepared for this, so I'm sure they, they okay, got fine. it. Uh, fine. Yes, thanks, thanks for asking. So that's fine. Um, so the other thing is is that if you are if you're looking at this is the this is the frequency analysis of that. But actually, if you think about the waveform, how is it uh, the, the how is it really um, structured? Then you then you should you should look at the waveform of of that. So how the waveform is 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 um, is used and uh, sorry is is um, uh, what's the, what's the word? Um, uh, formed uh, is the word. So, so this is interesting because let's let's do the the other let's do the the other analysis. So this is a scope, okay. So I'll I'll open that up. Um, so I start capturing. Uh, hopefully, so the um, uh, the waveform you see here. Okay, I don't know how of updating the waveform you see is is my my the waveform that uh, from my talking right you know my my voice. So if I if I do this if I hit the um, the meditation bowl again, there will be a um, a, a, a waveform generated initially with the harmonics that you see and then reducing it to a sign because of the fact that we have we have only the single component frequency component which is a single sine wave so let, let's see how it goes um i hope you kept you you you, you caught that so when i when i hit it there was a certain waveform which has lots of uh, harmonics in it, and then the harmonics reduced, and it became a, a sine sine wave with a simple sound that is in five three uh, five hundred and thirty nine hertz. So let me to do that again. See, it it ended as a as a sine wave. So that's that's actually if you think about it that's the um that's the nice way so the 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 sound can be represented from a frequency perspective or from a waveform perspective because of the uh, so so the diagrams that i showed earlier actually is is um is is, is those two facades of the same thing one is in time domain the other is in frequency domain um so so as the the, the um, amplitude increases, as you know, that's the sound volume increases. So you you, you see that the, the, that's in action basically. Um, so the good thing is, um, if you look at the um, the way that we can analyze this, is that we can analyze it in various harmonics, like we shown. Um, it's sine waves. So adding different sine waves, we can create any waveform we like, any waveform. Anything that that could be in the nature could be defined as a as a summation of various different sine waves. That's why it's very important that model that I've, I've mentioned earlier on is is so nice that it helps us to um, to to model any sound. And when you if you're using if you're into synthesizers, for example, additive synthesis is actually this you create different waveforms and you add them onto each other and create any waveform not any but you know some waveforms you like so if i if i try to um show that um uh, just a sec um if i want to show that to you uh let's see 
uh, how that works okay uh, let me see so so this is a this is an editive synthesizer that's for for demo for demo purposes so um these are the harmonics of of a sine wave and then um and then you can create by we can create any sound that we, not any sound but you know different sound waves by adding different harmonics so if i turn it on you hear it right you hear the sound uh, i'm now adding the second harmonic see how it changes both the frequency well, i'm adding this frequency so you can see that the frequency is this the scale and sound wave form is like that maybe we should reduce it slightly yeah if i add the third or harmonic third meaning three times the the main harmonic so if it's say 100 k 100 hertz this is 300 okay. fourth see five so i can add several stuff like that okay so for if i if i i could create a rough square wave with this like just adding the odd harmonics okay see I don't know if you can hear this but um so you could have also so you can play around with this i'll i'll share the link and that's that's additive synthesis there are different types of synthesis um that you can use i'm not going to go into like frequency modulation and so on but the main idea is for with with a certain mechanism like additive synthesis or frequency modulation or something like that or amplitude modulation that you create different harmonics to add characteristics to the sound and then envelope them in a certain way that it resembles or it it it, it creates the sound that you would like to have that is the idea of of sound creation so so this, to understand the sine waves and how they are combined to make different noise, vo uh, different sounds, is is essential uh, for for creation of of any sound, um, and 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 this is the basis for synthesis, sound synthesis. I hope that is. I'm. I'm really. This is basics, but you know, I I hope I'm hoping that you you kind of know these these things anyway. So um, I hope you're not bored by the way <laughs> okay um, yes they're, they're, they're actually quite familiar with this okay uh, fine fine so what i'll do now finally um um so the good thing is these are larigo pieces that that has this this kind of combined together uh for creation of the sound and and as i showed you you can do um the analysis of any any waveform with the frequency analysis of the any waveform and this is done by a French guy, uh, French mathematician's um, gift to us. It's called a Fourier transform. It's called Joseph Fourier, and and there's there's a different algorithm like a fast Fourier transform. So when you see FFT, that means you are either moving from time domain to frequency domain or frequency domain to time domain. I, I guess you, it's it's clear now. So it it kind of enables us to analyze, disassemble, synthesize every sound. And 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 thanks to Fourier, Mr. Fourier, we 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 got this um, this tool to to be able to do that. Uh, what I showed you just a moment ago is a frequency analyzer which does use FFT. Okay, moving on. So. So the next one is, okay, so this is how the sound is structured and everything. But what about how we hear? So I'm not going to go into the, the huge detail of this, but this is pretty interesting in my opinion as well. So just to see what, what kind of um, uh, w mechanism we have for hearing. So yeah, we have a pinna, you know, we have the outer ear. Um, this is to get the day, get the sound into our to to our ear canal but it also has a very very interesting function it uh, because of 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 reflections because of the the shape of the pinna you know like this 
curves and whatnot, it reflects treble frequencies in a different way. And it helps us to find the location vertically. You see, we got two ears that is, that is on, on a horizontal plane. So we can find out where the where a sound is located uh, on the horizontal plane, like to our right or to our left. But how can we understand what's up? Uh, what, what, where is it coming from, up or down? That's how we f that's how we find that it's it's actually diffracted, in in uh, or or reflected. Sorry, in in the pinna, and then gets into uh, into uh, the uh, to our canal, and our brain finds out that reflection the effect of that reflection which is called comb filtering that finds out where the, the sound is located it's pretty interesting actually um, anyway so it gets into uh, into the, um, uh, the the ear canal ear canal it's it's a material it's 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 an object right it has a material um, the inter the other interesting thing is that it has a resonant frequency like 4k <laughs> So, um, and when you have tinnitus, you know, like you have, you're exposed to huge, um, uh, what's that, uh, loud sounds, you, you hear this ringing in your, in your ear, that is the, that is the resonant frequency of your, um, uh, or, or your ear canal, generally speaking, not every, t always, but generally speaking, that is the case, and it's around 4K, but it could be higher and lower. Anyway, the ear comes to you, uh, sorry, the sound comes to your uh, ear canal and then hits your eardrum, right? Eardrum is, is a, is, is I think, one centimeter or something. And then it goes through these, these bones that are smallest bones in your body. But the, the most important bit is that this is a leverage. This is like an um, like, like amplifier that, that amplifies the sound, right? And the reason is that your eardrum is one centimeter, but the the level the um, the um, the drum not the drum but the skin of of not skin but the um, the sensitive part let's say of the cochlea, which is this bit, is actually much smaller than that, like probably one tenth of the size. So this whole leverage thing, like the the um, uh, the levers, um, like you know uh, that 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 causes the amplification because of the um, of this bone. Uh, sorry, you can't see my my um, my pointer, unfortunately. But the, the first bone uh, after the eardrum is shorter than the the bone on the right, which is connected to the anvil. So it, it's kind of funny. It, it it actually increases the vibration by twelve to nineteen times. Can you believe? So that's why we can hear that those small ripples that I, I, I'm talking about. And then the sound comes to co co cochlea. The cochlea is, is pretty interesting because it has water in it and it, it has various different hairs that, that is tuned to certain resonant frequencies. Okay, so the, the, the hairs around the cochlea is, is tuned. So you can actually think about that as a frequency analyzer, like, an, a, a, like a Fourier transform. So it does that. And, the, and, and basically, when, when they're excited, depending on their resonance frequency, electrical single send, signals sent to the brain, and the brain processes everything. So let's go into this, this interesting cochlea thing, right? You know, how we distinguish the frequencies. So the Cochlea is, is pretty interesting. This is this looks like a, a a a small snail, but actually it's not a snail because this part, the entrance part, is small, and 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 the the inner part is is larger. So if you look at the so if you op, if you if you can open this up, it will be a, like a triangle. So it will it will be um, smaller here and a larger here, a membrane. And this is called the basilar membrane, where those small hairs are. Okay, this is interesting because um, the smaller the area here, the membrane here, is the resonant frequency. Resonant frequency of that membrane is higher, meaning treble sounds, higher frequency sounds are perceived here. 
causing those hairs to be to jingle or to 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 vibrate um so the t so the uh, the higher frequencies are could, could um, uh, vibrate those hairs and the signals are went to the brain and then as we go inside as the the sound goes inside the membrane gets larger and larger causing the resonant frequency to go lower and lower so it goes into up until to 20 hertz right so you can argue that this is like a a, a simple synthesizer or a mic or, or a not size synthesizer or analyzer that does frequency analysis from 20k hertz to 20 hertz okay so so i found this to be very interesting because these are just signals that are on basic frequencies and what what brain does is to merge them into a single sound that that you perceive right um and also this explains why we lose our ability to hear trebles uh, like 20k i'm i'm at 12.5k hertz i don't i can't hear anything above that 12 12.5k 12 uh, you're probably much better than me probably 16 my daughter is at your age so it's like 16 she was when we tested for a babe for a baby it's like 20k and the reason for that is that when you get the sound here, these are the ones that are excited, even though, um, you know, like the first hit, if you like, even though the sound can be here, heard here. So gradually, these ones get dim damaged, you know, unfortunately. So the first few, few hairs here. So you lose your ability to hear the treble notes, the higher frequencies. That's why. So it's because of our design of the cochlea. Um, so finally, we got all this data, all these this signals from the cochlea into our brain. Well, this part, we know that the sound is modeled very nicely. We, we discussed that. But unfortunately, how our brain processes those signals are not modeled that well. We don't understand how our brain works when, when it comes to uh, you know, um, analyzing the, the signals and, and creation, creation of the perception of hearing. So... That is that is studied empirically, uh, empirically. So meaning, you know, and and they they just do some um, tests and 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 some research and try to understand it. So it is fairly nice. It's fairly un, fairly um, understood, but it's not precise. So um, and and our, and it shows that our hearing is not precise. There are lots of factors um, when you. Uh, eat say um, a, a, a large pizza before we listen to music you hear it differently before uh, compared to before you you eat that pizza even so <laughs> so it depends on on various factors even hormones and everything to how you perceive the music in, in at night you you hear it differently in the morning you hear it differently lots of different factors to influence but but the, the way that it works, the the model is that it has this 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 echoic memory in 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 our minds of four to five seconds. So whenever we have these signals from from the ear, it's stored in that forty five four to five seconds short term echoic memory, and then our minds reads it from there. Okay, that's a model, by the way. Don't take that like literally. It reads it from there. And then processes it and it kind of ignores some signals focuses on the others that's why for example if you're in a noisy place you go to a pub and you're looking you know you're talking to people and there's so much noise you can still understand what that person is talking about even with that high level of noise sometimes you know there's a limit to it obviously but yeah you see where i'm coming from and and then it, it does hazard assessment like should i run away you know, is it a big bang or something um, and also it determines location. Interestingly, if, if it feels that it's a, it's a speech, it is sent to a special center to be, to be analyzed so that we can recognize speech. That's, that's special in our brain. So, and then finally, the cognitive part of the brain decides which sound to store and how long. So, so we do not store the sounds for a long time. We just store the feeling of that sound. So that's why, in some cases, when we hear some music, 
we we remember the old days we remember the first time we listened to it and and so on that that's why we rem but that's why that's how how things are remembered that not precise but the feeling of it and also that explains why we hear or remember things different when we hear it in different auditions like different times so so it's not precise we're not talking about an analytical kind of an analyzer mechanical analyzer we're talking about something with with uh with with uh, emotions and and with feelings and and whatnot which is luckily so so that we can um pass on emotions with music from one to to another person uh, in in different times so that's how we kind of hear it uh, hear the um uh, the the sounds so there's one thing I, I, I want to very quickly go through is, is that the level of the sound depends the, the, that we perceive depends on the frequency. I mentioned this before. I said like, okay, zero level and then we got 120. But actually, it is not the same depending on the frequency, right? So this is something called fletcher Manson curves. Um, and, and, and two um, scientists called Fletcher and Monson, or as you can imagine, um, came up with this uh, simple experiment, not simple, but an experiment, let's say, to see um, how people perceive different frequencies in what different amplitudes. And what they found out is extremely interesting. As the, as the sound goes um, it re reduced, the level is reduced, the intensity is reduced, I mean, it gets quieter, we start not hearing the, uh, the bass and the trebles. But bass more, but, but, but trebles as well. So, for example, for a, say, for 100 hertz, right, the zero level for 100 hertz, if, in order to hear at the same level, for 100, 100 hertz or 1k, 1000, sorry, why I say 100, 1000k, we, we only need zero decibels. But for 100, we need 40 decibels. So you remember, remember the scale. So it should be four times louder, right? That's, that's very interesting. So listening level defines the frequency of the sound that we um that we perceive which is a shame obviously um but if you want to do a um a a, a proper mix say um what you do is you try to do it in the level that we kind of equally feel the same way for around, across these different frequencies and that is about 83 to 85 decibels so what I suggest that whenever you, you try to do any mixing or mastering or anything around sound, you listen to it with 83 to 85 hertz so that it's roughly the, um, equal between different frequencies. If you do it um, quieter, then you will add more bass to, to cover up, right? You know, to, to fill in or more treble. So that's... From from a, from this is from a, a a mixing and mastering perspective. So when you're listening to it, if the level is low, you need some treble, the tone controls like bass and treble to turn them on. Uh, in old amplifiers, there's this button called loudness. That's why it was, but it is not working fine. So um, they they got rid of it. But but the main thing is to to take away from that is that. If you're going to do any mixing, you need to do it 83 to 85 decibel, and this is the reason for it. Right, you know, because our perception of hearing is not linear compared to the different levels and, and different frequencies. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so yeah, and also obviously the the eighty three level, eighty two de three decibels, eighty five decibels is a good level because it actually um, the the background noise that that I showed, like forty to fifty decibels, is is below one percent of the music level so you don't hear the now noise in the background while you're mixing or mastering so the question is then how do we measure the sound level i don't know if you if you have any uh, as sound designers you should have a, a a sound level meter something like like this let me show you my camera 
something like this. There are many versions of that. I put it in the iPhone, obviously. Um, so it, it shows the, the sound level, okay? And it has something here. It says DBA, okay? That's the weighting of, of, that, uh, of, of, of the, the, the measurement. And when I say main weighting, I mean what frequency, frequencies that you need to consider while, while um, measuring the level, sound level. So A weighting is, as you could see, um, as, as I, I showed you, um, if you look at this, right, the, the sound between 600 to uh, 6,000 6, um, 600 to 6,000 hertz is the is the frequencies that we can hear easily because it's the speech and so on and it's most of the natural sounds are like that so those are the, this is the level um, so a way actually emphasizes those frequencies so we can we can have a better um, or, or resemble more the the hearing but if you're looking at hi-fi if you're looking at like a, a full-blown full-scale uh, sound production you have to see this you have to use the C weighting which is which includes the bass frequencies as well in the in the, in the level so 83 when you when you're mixing music for example you have to take 83 85 decibel level using C weighting rather than a weighting and there's something called Z weighting which is basically flat right you know no weighting at all it, that's why it's called Z anyway, Z, zero weighting. So I would suggest that C weighting is, is best suited for hi-fi mixing and so on. Um, I don't know if that's in line with your with your thoughts, uh, in Al, but yeah. I don't... Uh, do, you, do you think those applications are reliable? Um, not really, no. Um, the, but 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 for the level of eighty three to eighty five, I think that's they're good enough. Yes. But if you want to do a proper um, proper measurement, then you need an SPL meter or a calibrated um, microphone, like I showed you before. That the, the that one that one shows it. Um, that what you know, like like this. Uh, that 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 shows. Uh, very precisely what the the level is and 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 yeah, you can you can cool. test it that way so yeah but for i mean for home usage for like you know oh what's the decibel here kind of thing i think that they're good enough to be honest um okay so where are we okay i was going to talk about the masking effect um sorry uh but but i i, I think we're running out of time um, but what I could say is that there is this, um, so when you hear a, a, a main frequency, then you tend to mask some other bits. Like, you know, I, I explained that the, um, when, you, when you have the tape hiss are, uh, in the background, like, then when you listen, when you add music to it, then it all goes off because it's so low compared to the music. Then you don't realize it. The, your ear, your your hearing masks the effect. There are similar things like that when you have two frequencies in a close vicinity. Anything below 30 decibels are just gone. Actually, interestingly, the lossy algorithms like MP3, AAC, Vorbis, Og Vorbis, and that kind of stuff uses that. So anything that is masked is cannot you can't hear. So we can just drop that off uh, from the. Uh, from the file so that reduces the file size considerably having said that you lose some some data obviously during that effect anyway i'm not going to do a demo of that um finally we we discussed the wavelength um of the sound as a, as a property um i'm not going to go into detail but this has implications around acoustics so the wavelength of any sound as um, is 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 very very important when you're thinking about acoustics, and the reason is, you you we have 20 hertz. We listen, we hear 20 from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, right? And and with 20 hertz, the wave, you know, the the sound of the sorry, the wavelength of the sound is 17 meters, right? You know, from rarefaction to compression to rarefaction. Remember that. 
from two, for 200 hertz it's 1.7 2k 17 centimeters and 20k it's 17 millimeters so it's a huge you know difference and this has lots of effects um, on, on how we perceive how the sound acoustically behaves and how we can locate the sounds where they're coming from and so on i'm not going to go into detail this is a this is a this is a long so subject but just be mindful of the fact that wavelength of the sound is very important acoustically okay um so so it, it's it's different uh way maybe we could do another webinar sometime about acoustical properties of 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 the sound how it propagates <laughs> so yeah anyway i'll, I think I'll skip you're, you're correct in that this requires another level of um it requires this whole new uh webinar for uh, to speak about acoustics yeah uh, uh, absolutely sorry they're carrying something so it's a loud noise um so yeah definitely i um, but, but uh, this is a very interesting topic as well but i mean let's not go into it <laughs> at this point okay and the final one that we discussed was phase if you remember um so the phase is is the is the point is is the um, is is the point in time w of, of a signal right actually um this one shows why it's called a sine wave right that's that's a very good one if, if you look at the um the angle which is what the phase is when it's zero it starts from see it's fr starts from there from zero and then it all goes to 90 and then 118 uh, 180 and then 220 and so on so sine of zero is zero sine of 90 is one sine of 108 is zero again and and sine of 270 is minus one so that's why it's called sine wave okay and so um so you would say like okay what what what's you know is it is, does it matter what's what's phases um it it doesn't if you have a single single wave it doesn't matter where it starts right you know it, it comes to you and you can hear it but it's a big 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 issue when you have two sources or two points that you 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 listen to your music right like ears for example there are two ears and you listen to it Actually, with this phase difference, we understand the location of, of the sound, where the sound comes from, using this phase, okay? But for, I've, I've changed this, these slides slightly um, to say, like, uh, this is, when, when two, um, two sounds, two waves have a slight phase shift, you know, that, that is absolutely you know kills the whole whole uh, whole thing because when they're out of phase they edit together the sound edit together and 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 create a different frequency the, the, the different sound it changes the characteristics of the sound and and, and it, it creates this really odd effect which is used actually in some of the cases like phaser effects and, and flanger effects and so on. They are actually done by shifting the phase of, of a waveform. And it affects all sorts of things like the driver alignment on speakers, you know, alignment of subwoofers, lots of stuff. I'm not going to go stereo stage in stereo. Um, with phase, you can create illusions um like um like you know the sound is coming from your behind using two speakers um so there are two ways to pen a a a, uh, a sound I'm, I'm pretty sure you you tried that you know you either pen the sound with the uh with, with the pot right that is reducing the volume from one channel to the other and 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 and, and reducing vo vo volume to one channel moving the the sound to the one that you didn't re reduce, right? You know, like if you reduce the left, it goes to the right. But you can do exactly the same thing using phase, right? Not exactly the same thing, but you know, similar thing to the phase. If you delay a sound on one channel, it will sound as if it's coming from the undelayed one, right? So it moves on the on the stage. That's how 
the phase is is done. But more importantly, um, I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you had this um, uh, y any labs or anything about recording or different sounds with multiple microphones. Uh, if you had this, you would definitely know that reflections from nearby surfaces are because they 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 it takes longer for them to to come to your ear they they, they get out of phase they, if there are multiple speakers sh um having the same uh, or have the same um uh, sound because they are they they come to you in different times they create phase and 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 the multiple microphones and the classic one obviously is the drum you know the overhead drum microphones you probably seen those um, so you, you put two microphones to capture the symbols and whatever on the drum right on the top and and because they are they could be in different distance to the snare the snare drum sound it kills the snare drum sounds and this is why this is uh, the reason is that when you slightly shift a the, the two two um, two signals like that and add them up that is the frequency diagram or frequency response of that that addition that you see on the screen now which is which looks like a comb and it's called comb filtering which has this really odd effect okay i'm not going to get make you to watch the video but i have this really nice video that shows um, all the effects of reflection from surfaces, multiple speakers, and multiple microphones. So be very careful about using the, the, the overhead microphones on drums. They should be equidistant from the snare, not to kill the snare sound. So I always I kind of measure the, the difference and, and, and make sure that the snare is okay. Right? Um, so because that sound, sound changes. Uh, our ears are like that, but luckily, our brain kills that effect, or or, or gets it gets rid of that effect of the comb filtering. So we hear things nicely rather than comb filtered, if you like. Okay, and um, and finally, I um, oh, why did I ah okay so that one. So and, and finally, I'll talk about the polarity, which is a special case of of the phase um, phase shift, but they are just kind of they always g gets confused. So polarity is is the exact opposite of a signal, like you know negative of the signal. So um, if one signal is exactly the same when you add them up, they just they become double, right? Double the size. But if they are in different polarities. Meaning, you know, like the when it, when the, when one is up, one is uh, higher, uh, and and one is lower. When you add them up, it basically adds that to zero. So there are very different ways to do the uh, uses of this. Like noise noise cancelling headphones works based on this principle, for example. Um, so we don't want we so there so it it actually understands the voice and noise outside and it creates a signal that is the exact opposite polarity of that in your ear and you will basically get those noises reduced that's how it works and and my other classical example is is the snare so if you're miking the snare drum you you know the snare drum right i don't know if you did such exercises like m miking you know microphone taking the, the snare drum sound recording the snare drum sound so snare drum has the skin on the top and and a skin on the bottom but also has this kind of um springs not springs but like um strings in at the bottom that creates that that funny snare sound so in order to capture them you have to put a microphone on the top and a microphone on the bottom and interestingly, the frequency of the snare sound is completely reversed in polarity. So when you hit that, most of the time, not always, but when you hit this and, and record these two microphones and mix them in, the, in, in your console, right, they generally cancel each other, at least from, you know, at some point. So you may need to reverse the polarity of that so that they add, they add on top of each other not to... Not to um, destruct them 
So anyway, I, I, I do have a demo, but I'm just conscious of the time, actually. We started at one, it's nearly four o'clock. So I don't yeah. wanna, I, I, um, I don't wanna. I think it would be uh, good if we can. Complete it, right? This is the this last up, slide anyway. Up, yeah. Yes, okay. It, um, then so, we can move a few questions maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure, uh, sure, absolutely. So anyway, my, this, this is my last slide, okay? And, I, I, and, this, and this is a message rather than anything to tell you. Like I, I so what I suggest that uh, as a as a so sound designer, uh, what I suggest to you two things. One, understand psychoacoustics. Okay, I'm not. I, I haven't scratched the surface even on this, but how your ear hearing works, how the sound is perceived, all and acoustical re um, acoustical implications of the sound and and so on. So I think you should, as a sound designer, you should definitely understand that, like how phase works, so that how you can do the, the panning properly to be interesting and so on and so forth. That's one, one suggestion to, to you. The second one is you need to train your ears. You need to be able to figure out which frequency component is prominent in a, in a certain sound. Like, you know, is it, and, and, and what, when you hear a, a, a sound, you should be able to figure out whereabouts in the frequency range it is. What is the difference between a certain a sound of a certain amplitude and another amplitude? You have to be trained by ear. And I'll give you one quick um, study as, 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 uh, what, that's done on 300 individuals by Harman. It's a, it's a big company um, that's producing things like JBL and, and all, all sorts of uh, PA equipment and hi-fi equipment. So what they did is like they, they tested, they put together four different or four or five different uh, setups and, and got these 300 individuals to listen to them in different occasions and try to figure out, um, like try to tell, said them, can you grade them? Can you grade the quality of the sound? Okay. And what happened is, is that they, they, what they're trying to, sorry, measure is, is that the consistency of these people grading the same equipment with the same um, uh, quality level, right? You know, same um, uh, points. And the interesting bit is, is this, okay? So the students who, there's nothing to do with sound or, or sound engineering or anything, came the last okay i lost my cam again uh, i don't know why that happens okay so the students came the last the marketing executives the audio reviewers retailers they're just inconsistent i mean they could just flip the coin and, and figure that one out the ones that could only make this are trained people so you what i'm suggesting here is that yeah okay you need to study psychoacoustics fine but also please train your ear please find out what freq you know to be easily identify what frequency you're hearing how much is how, how much is the difference between a certain level and another level and there are many ways to do that um i'm, I'm i heard that from um uh, you using sound gym uh I, I put the uh, the links here. You can have the, the Critical Listening Ear Trainer. That is a absolutely wonderful website. It's free of charge. It's so good. It has quizzes and everything. Sound Gym is good. Audio Drills is good and, and so on. And all the tests that you see here is, is, um, is, is in not all the tests, some of the tests, sorry, from Audio Check. So you can actually see your perception about dynamic range and, and so on. So my suggestion to you is, is, is try these um, and, and get yourself ear trained. Absolutely necessary for sound, sound designers. Anyway, that's me. That's, that's it from, from me um, today. So we, I guess we can come to the questions. Uh, thank you very much, Sina, for all this um, very informative <laughs> uh, Thanks so much. presentation. Um, although we had some sound issues, I don't know how much of it is reflected to the online uh, view, uh, viewers. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a few problems here. Um, but anyway, um, first I'll ask, ask a question that there was a lecturer we had uh, in the audience and he had to leave because he has a class. 
But before he left during the break, he asked me mm-hmm. uh, to ask this question on his behalf. Okay. Um, he was talking to me about this. Uh, he used this term, hi-fi voodoo. Um, and he's telling me that he has seen these expensive cables, uh, very thick cables. And he even told me something that I didn't know. Um, is that He said some people put the cables on... What is it? On stands to raise yes. it from the ground. Okay, yeah, I'm not. A, obviously, I'm not an audio field uh, in that caliber. But um, and he's tell is he, he's actually asking is how much of it is uh, based on science and is there bogus involved? Um, yeah. like is it a marketing trick or is anything that is, yeah. Um. So. Okay, very good question. But um, for in the audiophile community, I I, uh, I I I'm considered to be a objective audiophile, which means I try to listen, obviously, but I also realize that ear is not a um, a, a an analysis, a critical analysis tool. Okay. Uh, meaning you can't differentiate between 0.5 decibels, but if you measure something, you can dif- you can uh, you can differentiate between 0.1, for example. And and also our hearing is affected by all sorts of different factors, including our mood, including the noise around, including our our I'm cognitive okay. bias. You know, like what we're expecting to hear. They're all factors in, in our in the listening. So psychoacoustics actually is is the thing that that uh, um, that studies these these things, right? And it's found that um, most of the um, most of the perceptions that we see is and there's a study for this, which um, which is um, hearing is believing. Uh, is is the is the other thing article. So you you should definitely look into this. Uh, is is that we are we are very much affected by the cognitive bias, like so we're expecting to hear something better and we don't. And I've did a lot of tests on this to myself, so for to others and and so on, by using um, blind testing, meaning blind. you don't know what you're you're listening and then try to 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 categorize that or try to to I um grade that. Anyway, what well, what I'm trying to get to is that. All of these perceptions for different type of instruments and so on are are very much um, affected by our perception, which is not precise. And I'm not saying that our 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 hearing is is not precise; it, it's unuseless, unu- right? You know, we just have to measure things with with analyzers and so on. Not really. I mean, some of the things are we 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 immediately see, we immediately understand. The problem here is this, okay? So if you're in the middle of a road, in a, in a slopey road, like, you know, like with a slope, you will immediately understand if it's going up or down, right? It's, it's, so, it's, it's very clear for us. Like you, you sit, it's, it's a slope, like a rough road. But if I, tell, if I put you into a road that has a 1% slope, right? You would not understand if it's going up or down. It, it looks like it will be flat. And if I force you to say, is it going down or up, then you will use other things, other, other objects to find out if it's going up or down. So your perception will be affected by all these objects. And, and unfortunately, that, what, that is exactly what happens with, uh, with, with, with our hearing when we try to analyze things by listening. And I mentioned to you that the echo, the, the way the brain works is the echoic memory is about four to five seconds. So, so when you try a cable, right, you know, you put a cable in and you listen to it and you have this perception and then you'd remove it and try a different cable, right? Just add all these bits up, right? You add a different cable, your echoic memory is gone. It's, it's three to four seconds, right? You can't just switch in three to four seconds a, 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 a properly the, the cable. So using your feelings, your emotions mostly about that recording and the thing that you're focused on, not a, a, a generic analy- an, analy- uh, you know, an analysis of it. 
But the thing is, because you're expecting one thing to be much better than the other, you can choose to do choose to have that. So that's that's one of the reasons that some of the audiophile equipment is is they're, they're just people are paying a lot of money because they feel that there's a difference, right? Actually, is there a difference or not? Well, this is the thing, right? If you measure it, you can find that there are differences between between different uh, equipment. But when you when you actually calculate the effect of that, it's so minimal. It's so minimal. I, it, it, there is a difference, by the way. I'm not suggesting that there isn't. But it's um, so it, minimal that that it doesn't worth that money, which could go into like thousands of dollars or whatnot. Yes. I think so, at one point there's this um, the thing called diminishing returns. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, when you reach a point, uh, those things have less and less and less of an effect. Yeah. Uh, and... And, I think, but, yeah. yeah. And the curve for diminishing returns are very steep, by the way. So if you think about it, right, the, the absolute extreme is not having a cable, right? Not having a cable means nothing, right? You know, no sound. It's, it's drastic. Yeah. And the, on the other side, like, even if you have a very, like, min minimal, like, a basic cable, you can hear something that is pretty good. And yeah. then... If you have a better cable, then you, you kind of upgrade it and, and so on and so forth. But, but the diminishing returns, that, that, sti that is so steep. Like you, know, you immediately go into a really, really nice point. But then you can add on. And, and it, 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 there are some changes. There are some changes. But the, the effect of that is so minimal that I, I just cannot understand people paying $10,000 for a cable. And, and the other indicator is for you will be professionals, right? Um, I mean, professionals never, ever spend that much of money to cables and, and so on. Because, I mean, they just earn a living. They're not spending their money to a hobby, right? They want yeah. to earn a living. So you can take that from, take a clue from that too. Like, look at the professionals, you know. Does it, if it makes a difference, they will pay for it, but they don't. Um, but I'm not saying that, ah, you can use any cable. No, there is there is some um, so you need to good you need to have a good cable. Yes. And one final thing on to answer that is that if you buy an equipment that is costing you ten thousand dollars, right? You don't go and and put a cable to it which is costing fifty you know, five dollars, right? You put a little bit more, just because of the psychological reasons, <laughs> not 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 because. You want that, but psychologically, yeah. you just don't want to put a, a $5 cable to a $5,000 or $50,000 equipment. That's the other thing. Exactly. Anyway, I mean, that's, yes. I guess, Let's I hope that that's an answer have, to his question. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> if we have any other questions from our students, you can ask me and we can direct it. I think it was so thorough and they're so... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're they're a bit tired. To be honest with you, I mean, this is they like be, more than three hours tired. now. So yes, I I yes. appreciate your, um, you know, your your patience and perseverance. So <laughs> yes, we should. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. But um, I will I will share the uh, the slides um, then with the links and everything. So I think I, and then I've I've put some. Um, uh, also, if I go back, uh, I'll, I'll, I have put some uh, interesting references here. So you look, look, look into that, like pre uh, ref, uh, presentations, books, websites, and, and, and so on. So, um, yeah, I hope that that helps. Um, um, yeah. Yes, um, thank you, Sina. I think this um, the, the, the whole presentation and the references and the links that you're going to support um, is going to have a... Um, very helpful for our students um, and so i yep. would like to thank you for well, thank your you time, thanks so much. your effort your um it was really good to have your uh here as a guest yep. and although we had some technical difficulties um i think we might somehow managed yep. to go through the end 
Yeah, uh, next, next time, uh, when, I, if I visit, uh, when I visit Cyprus, I, 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 I could do that in, in, in person, which I would definitely prefer, but yeah. We will we'll want you to um, host you here, of yeah, course. Thank you so uh, much. So, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, take uh, care then. Um, okay, thank you. To end this um, transmission. Transmission. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, thanks for listening to us. Um, if there's anyone online, I'm not sure. Um, thanks for being with us. Um, hope to see you in in the next webinar that we're gonna do. Um, yes. Okay. Have a good uh, afternoon. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs>